Hey, how's it going? Um, this is going to be part three in the World War Three series. And um, this is pretty much going to have a, mostly to do with uh, the economy and where it's going. Um, I know the first part was about the Belt and Road Initiative, because that's an extremely important um, topic to discuss. You can go check that out in part one. Um, part two was the coronavirus, because that followed and um, had a direct impact on what was to come next. And what happens next is the economic problem. And that's what we're going to be covering today. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's been following along, uh, commenting, subscribing, liking, uh, leaving comments. You know, I, I really like to hear other people's feedback. Um, it breaks the feedback loop that, that you know, uh, I get because it's only me talking. Um, but here it is. I'm going to start going over stuff. So um, happy Flag Day, too, by the way, for everyone in the United States. Now, let's get right into it. <clears throat> what I want to clear this up, too, because... Um, economics is not a very common topic that people really seem to understand. Um, and you can see that reflecting in a lot of the choices that's going on in Wall Street right now. Um, the whole idea behind the, the stock market, um, the stock pumps like AMC and uh, GME and um, Wall Street bets. <laughs> uh it's really funny to see some of the stuff on there. Um, it's scary too. It's it's kind of upsetting. But um, let me get right into it. This is the clarify. Now, <clears throat> what is economic instability? And you're going to see a couple things right here, and we're going to go eat over each one of these uh, issues that uh, it entails. So. Economic instability refers to the community or nation experience financial struggles due to inflation, consumer confidence issues, unemployment rates, and rising prices. We're going to cover all four of those. And then we're going to go into um, how it affects everything, uh, the production, and then we're going to go into the signs that you see during an economic collapse. Uh, we're going to go into the inflation. We're going to go into more statistics on um, the effects of war, um, it can be positive or negative. And then we're going to go into the continuing rise of China and um, what things are escalating into terms of war, which is what this whole series is about. And once again, you can find all of the um, links here in the description below. Um, so you can check it out yourself. And um, let's get on with it. Economic instability affects businesses' ability to thrive, the cost of living, and the physical, emotional, and financial well-being of consumers and families. When the economy experiences periods of high inflation, economic instability exists. And what are we seeing right now? Extremely high inflation. In fact, it's gone over twice the amount that was predicted months back. For the whole year, too, by the way. So we've already gone past what was expected over the next few years. That's a really bad sign. <clears throat> so let's see. When the economy experiences periods of high inflation, economic instability exists. The value of money decreases. Prices increase, causing hesitation among consumers and investors. This is something that I covered on a previous video about what we're seeing um, in the uh, why the account the economy is is really collapsing, uh, I'll I'll probably link that video below, but I'll also link you know part one and two um, to the World War series. <clears throat> now, as a result, consumer confidence plummets and fewer consumers purchase goods, while businesses run the risk of losing money. Consumer confidence in banking systems that run the risk of running out of credit is also low during times of economic instability. High unemployment rates can also lead to economic instability. What are we seeing? All of these things is what we're seeing happen in not only this country, but other countries too. Um, and if America collapses, a whole bunch of other countries collapse too. It's like dominoes, you know? 
When economic instability runs rampant, many people choose low-risk options for purchases, investments, and even family decisions. For example, individuals may have to evaluate the goods of the entire family when choosing between a low-paying job with health insurance and a higher-paying job without benefits during economic instability. Excuse me. And that's important because people want to maximize the amount of spendable income that they have in order to be able to provide for themselves and their family. Uh, that's extremely important because everyone has to make sacrifices. And when you make sacrifices, you have to start choosing wisely. Otherwise, it's going to have a devastating effect um, to whoever's making those decisions. So now we go up here. Um, let's see. Inflation. So let's see. Americans, and this is CNBC too, so I'm covering, you know, news from across the entire spectrum here uh, just to prove a point that um, this is in fact happening because a lot of people on the left want to pretend a lot of things are not happening that are scary and devastating. And a lot of people on the right are very, very blunt as to what happens and very direct. Um, so even finding the middle ground here between both of these, you start to see the reality of the situation. Um, the economy quickly picks up steam in the wake of COVID pandemic. Americans expect inflation to jump in the months ahead. Overall, expectations is that inflation rate will be up to 4% one year from now. 4% from now. We're already reaching like 4%. So that'll bring it up to 8%. A new high for one year ahead inflation expectations and 3.6 three years from now, the highest level since August 2013. In fact, it goes back even further. According to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, expectations to how much more consumers will spend on homes, food, rent, gas, the cost of college education, all rose in the most recent report. College education, that's one thing where the government was pretending that they were going to pay for it. It looks like that's not happening, and now there's inflation on that. At the same time, consumers surveyed the bank, uh, surveyed by the New York Fed, also expected household income and spending to increase, particularly among households with annual income of more than $100,000. $100, uh, the inevitable reopening of the economy will generate some pickup in inflation, experts say. Now, why would the reopening of the economy generate um, pickup in the inflation? Well, more goods need to be made. And the more that goods are made, the more materials need to be made. However, there's a shortage on materials. Uh, we're going to cover that too. And so supply and demand also plays a part. Um, and when people start cutting certain things out of their spending and only go for other particular things, um, lots of groups of these tend to, to, to rise in value and also shortages occur. Um, for instance, you're going to see an exceptional rise of electronics and stuff because of the semiconductor shortage and material shortage. However, there's going to be booms and boosts of spending on food because food is also increasing, but it's becoming hard to come by. And that's just pushing the price even further up because the more scarce food becomes, the more expensive food becomes. And the more expensive food becomes, the more people need to get food. It's this other cycle process um, I want to say it's a downward spiral, but it's really an upward spiral, which has a negative effect um, because the price just goes spirals up and up and up and up. Um, on top of that, we're seeing cyber attacks, which we're also going to get into. Um, you can go through this, how to protect your savings from rising costs. You know, you can go into this on your own. I'm just going to continue. Um, so what was the second thing now? Uh, consumer confidence issues. Inflation rate 2021 hits American retail, but will it last? And this is Forbes. People fear inflation, but don't know why. And this is why I'm making a video here. 
Uh, some define it as an increase in price, while others point a decline of purchasing power. That's a very good point to make. Um, and I would say the latter um, is really what, what pushes it even further because the inflation is really a devaluation of money. And the more money is devalued, the more it costs to buy something. And then when you see food shortages, then goods themselves become more expensive. So you're seeing um, a, a, a multifold increase in the prices of things and the negative spending power. These are very important things to, to take into consideration. Many know exactly what it means and others simply believe it's something new. Interesting. In New York City, signs of inflation started a few months ago while headlines in the local papers were screaming urban flight. At the same time, New York City residents who remained in town noticed a few changes in their rental environment. Um, and highly packed areas and cities and stuff become very dangerous in times like this because there's the highest demand for goods and services in cities where doing all these things yourself is near impossible. You know, food doesn't grow on trees in cities, you know. Um, I don't live in a city, so I could literally, you know, I could walk down the block and, and, and you know, fill up a, a container with blackberries and, and other things if I had to. Uh, in the city, those things don't really exist. Um, even in Central Park, you know, people aren't growing food there. They rely on imports. Um, and in the city, there aren't really that many animals. And the animals that are there have, like, really bad diseases, and you wouldn't want to eat them. Out here, I could, if I had to, I could literally, you know, shoot and hunt squirrels, um, deer, or other things, you know. Out in the city, you can't really do that. Um, you know, not that people wouldn't be fighting over animals and food out here either, which is definitely true, but it's definitely more available than a lot of places in the city. And that's why cities are dangerous, because then when all these goods become like short, then uh, you start seeing a lot of gangs rise and stuff. And I'm going to get into that um, in, in just a bit here, too, uh, during the rise of, of what happens in terrible economic times and economic economic collapse. So first came the shrinking martini, subtle and hard to fathom. The shaker and the martini glass were ever slightly reduced in size. New York City pub patrons complained to no avail. At first, it was like approaching your boss for a raise. Management would say business was tough, but denied anything had changed. Following the shrinking martini, pastrami sandwiches breached the $18 market and soared to $22.50. $22 for a sandwich. $22 for a sandwich. Think about that. $22 for a sandwich. That's insane. It shouldn't cost you more than three, four dollars for a sandwich. That's like six times the price or more. Designer t-shirts jumped from $25 to $40. That's nearly 50 cent, uh, 50 percent. Shoes went from $180 to $225. Price of gas hit 303 a gallon as compared to 224 really out in new york it's much higher than that i mean they do less driving in the city but out where I, I, i'm at it's like five dollars a gallon um i said those are like obama prices and there's <laughs> i'm gonna get into that um and new york once again raised the false claim that their beloved malamars were shrinking as well clearly the fix hit New York City, long before Democratic economists, Lon Summers called out USA inflation in print and on national TV. So we see that happening. So now consumers are starting to think about their prices and what things are really worth. Um, even though there's, you know, people have gotten their vaccinations, uh, which don't work, by the way, um, and they're going into uh they're allowed to go into these bars that are open and stuff you're seeing hardly anybody really go um not only are a lot of people still scared from what's going on but they're wise about how they want to spend their money if they want to go drink they're going to go to the store and buy like a six pack or a 12 pack or a 24 pack they're not going to spend that same price on like three drinks instead um and if they do they're not very wise how they're spending their money um a report in retrospect 
Nobody, especially Larry Summers, was completely surprised when April's consumer prices increased to 4.2% from last year. However, the current mode of government speak, federal officials brush it off and imply that these increases were temporary. It's going to get worse. It's going to get worse. Now, we went over consumer confidence issues. Now, what about unemployment rates? Okay, unemployment. <clears throat> Let's see. Early June data shows unemployment to rise further, fall in labor participation. 30-day moving average unemployment rose 13% on June 6, 2021, from 11.9% in May, um, and labor participation rate fell further to 39.7% from 40%. So the unemployment rose and participation fell. Now, unemployment continues to rise unabated. The 30-day moving average unemployment rate rose 13% on June 6, 2021, from 11.9% in uh, percent, that's funny, in May as uh, per CMIE data, indicating worsening of the situation further. Not only that, the labor participation fell further to 39.4% from 40% during the same period, showing lesser number of jobs available in the market. So there's actually less jobs available because people aren't even able to pay um, their employees as well. It's the worst condition since the total nationwide lockdown of April and May 2020 when all economic activities except essential ones were shut down. The last four weeks have been particularly hard for the Indian labor market. Labor market conditions deteriorated sharply during this period. Labor partici participation rate had begun falling. So this is a global issue as well. Um, we're still seeing mass impact across the world. And uh, like I said before, you know, when things happen in America, it happens across the world too. It's like dominoes. Um, so we're just seeing situations just worsen and worsen and worsen. Um, unemployment in the country that has been fluctuating in 2020 every month it was because people got it's because people got jobs one month and lost them the next month. There was no stability in the job market. Unemployment rate in January 2021 was 6.52%, which rose to 7.79%. So we're seeing unemployment rates and then rising prices. So let's see. Now we're at CNN Business. So this is another left-wing website. Let's see what they have to say. The perfect storm making everything you need more expensive. I mean, it's like it never ends here. It's We're going four for four right now. Uh, steel, lumber, plastic, and fuel. Corn, soybeans, sugar, and sunflower oil. Houses, cars, diapers, toilet paper. Prices are rising almost everywhere you look. The post-pandemic recovery is in full swing and the global economy is struggling to keep up. Following a collapse at the start of the pandemic, as business closed, millions of workers lost jobs. Demanding has, demand has rebounded with, the, with vengeance, spurred by government stimulus and consumer flush with savings. Savings. I mean, we just went over what's going on. Companies that idled factories or put workers on furlough during lockdowns are now un unable to secure enough raw materials to build the houses, make the cars, or assemble the appliances that are suddenly in high demand. Interesting. Companies are furiously trying to restock inventories following last year's global recession. Straining supply chains already reeling from the pandemic. Now, this is something I want to go over because it's supply and demand. So now we have a surge in all these companies and stores trying to open up. And now they can't get their hands on the goods because all the work was unavailable and all the workers. Um, and on top of that, a material shortage. So now we're seeing um, an even faster collapse because now we have nothing to, to counteract the, the, the bust that uh, or the boom, I should say, that uh, that's supposedly happening right now with everyone kind of returning. Um, this is what creates shortages. Um, and uh, 
these are natural shortages as opposed to artificial shortages, um, which is also often implemented, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, so look at this. Inflation is up in wealthier countries. So it, w it was down, and now it's going right back up to 3.3%, and it's going to go higher. You notice inflation was lowest during Trump's presidency? I find that pretty interesting. So now that we've covered those four things, let's go into the massive food shortage coming, which I just touched on. Now, you can just Google this yourself or, or DuckDuckGo it. I don't even like Google. Don't Google it. DuckDuckGo it. <laughs> or find something else like uh, Quant or some other um, page. Now, grocery shortages to expect in 2021. Massive food shortage come in. Get a bank... Get a backup supply, which I mentioned months ago and put in a video of your backup supply of food. You want at least two months or three, like 90 days worth. Um, food shortage is coming. I mean, you can just type that in and, and just pick any of these pages you want. That's why I didn't particularly choose one. I wanted to show you how severe this actually is and how real this situation is. Um, so let's just move right on. Now, this is uh, 13 scary things that happen when an economy collapses. These are situations that you really have to look for. These are things that people don't even have in their mind when stuff like this happens until it already starts happening in front of their eyes and it's too late to react. Um, kidnappings increase. Countries that experience an economic collapse usually see a spike in kidnappings as well. Kidnapping a person of wealth and demanding a ransom is a one-way for desperate people to acquire money when there is no means of acquiring money are available. It's only when wealthy that are at risk. It isn't only the wealthy that are at risk, <clears throat> though, as desperate kidnappers will take anyone they can, ca they can in hopes of that somebody will pay a ransom. People can't pay for their pets either, so pets go missing. Even if you can afford to continue feeding your pet during an economic collapse, there's still no guarantee that they will be safe. Few people have the skills or resources to hunt wild animals when food is scarce. Domestic animals, however, make much easier targets. If people eating dogs and cats in order to survive sounds far-fetched, there are plenty of examples that prove otherwise. In fact, people start eating people. Uh, you could see that in Ukraine, in Russia, Yugoslavia. I mean, it goes on. Uh, it gets scary. Google, Google um, DuckDuckGo. Uh, Cannibalism and people eating people in Russia. Let's see what pops up. Water quality drops. Private citizens are not only ones affected by economic collapse. State and local governments feel the strain of economic shutdowns as much as anyone, if not more. When the funds simply aren't available, even some of the local government's most important duties, such as ensuring access to clean drinking water, are often neglected. Uh, I touched on this in, in another video. Uh, and even if they do get clean water, they won't necessarily do a good job. People riot in the streets. Oh, we've been seeing that, haven't we? And all for the wrong reasons, too. When people are desperate and angry, they often start rioting. These riots can quickly become dangerous as people take advantage of the chaos and get away with all sorts of crimes and robbery and vandalism to murder. Uh, if caught in a riot, it's essential to make your way to a less crowded area indoors as soon as possible. Carjackings become more common. Uh, I covered this in uh, months ago, too. Uh, in desperate times, robbing a person's car is typically safer than robbing someone's home since the individual being robbed is much less likely to be armed inside their vehicle as inside their home. <clears throat> Hospitals become overcrowded due to factors such as no garbage pickups, unclean drinking water, and the spread of disease, inability to afford medications, and spike in violent crimes. People tend to visit hospitals much more frequently during an economic collapse. Gasoline is rationed. Hmm, it's like we're seeing all these things. Gasoline is rationed. Remember the cyber attacks? Oh, there's more to come, too. I'm going to cover that. In the wake of an economic collapse, going to the gas station to fill up may not be a possibility. Gasoline will likely be rationed, if it's even available in your area, of course. Without gasoline, escaping a dangerous location or situation becomes much more difficult. Banks close. One of the first things people can do when an, economic, when an economy collapses is to rush to the bank in order to withdraw their funds, which pushes the con economic collapse even further. One thing people don't realize, though, is that banks don't keep cash on hand uh, to pay out anywhere close to the amount of money they owe. Now, it's true. 
They go on lending money. When you put money into a bank, they take a portion of that and they lend it out. That's why they give you interest um, and, and an incentive to keep your money there so they can have something to borrow. Terrorist attacks become more frequent. Oh, we've been seeing that too. Should U.S. economy collapse, the, econ the country's enemies will be left smelling the blood in the water. Cyber attacks, anyone? Especially if hyperinflation or lack of funds force us to withdraw from countries like Afghanistan all at once. Saw that. Wow. Gang activity increases. I mentioned that. Uh, left with few options, more and more people turn to criminal activity during an economic collapse. In addition to desperation, other factor, uh, <clears throat> another factor fueling gang activity during times of economic downturn is the fact that gangs know the city will have fewer resources available to combat their activities. Interstate trucking halts. That affects food and everything that you have. Factors such as oil embargo or massive increase in robberies could grind interstate trucking to a halt uh, in the event of an economic collapse. Unable to rely on trucking for transportation, stores would quickly run out of food and other essential supplies, bringing the prices up even further. Martial law is enacted. Um, I think we just know what that means. People eat almost anything to survive, including other people. It's going to be chaos in the cities. Imagine being so hungry that you resort to eating the dead rat you found in the trash. This is sort of thing happening in Venezuela right now. They're even slaughtering zoo animals for food. If it happened there, it can happen here. Now, how many cyber attacks happened per day in 2021? You're going to be surprised. Look at this. Globally, 30,000 websites are hacked daily. 64% of companies worldwide have experienced at least one form of cyber attack. There were 20 million breach records in March 2021. In 2020, ransom cases grew by 150%. Everyone on the East Coast knows that. Around 94% of all malware is spread through email. Every 39 seconds, there is a new attack somewhere on the web, an average of around 24,000 malicious mobile phone apps is blocked daily on the internet. Cybersecurity statistics. 30, 300,000 new pieces of malware detected daily. Uh, this is all going to be down in the description below. So if you got the time, check all this out. I mean, we're seeing all of this happen in front of our eyes. I mean, you can't even deny this stuff. Now we're going into the war aspect. <clears throat> China, nuclear weapons arsenal, gro uh, weapons arsenal growth, alarming, State Department warns. Hmm, I've been saying that for a while. Uh, not to mention on Sunday, uh, this past Sunday, there was a, a nuclear leak in China followed by an explosion. Uh, so let's see what's happening. China was has rapidly expanding its nuclear conventional missile forces over the past decade nearly tripling its ballistic missile production capability and deploying a, a wide array of nuclear and conventional missile systems, or according to an uh, intelligence assessment released by the State Department. You know, they have nuclear submarines they've been pumping out left and right. Uh, I covered this in another video. Uh, they have nukes that can reach, like, almost any city in, uh, in the world, uh, besides, of course, maybe Russia and Africa. The department also notified Congress Thursday that it believes Beijing is close to violating the Nuclear Non-Proliferation uh, Treaty by refusing to join the United States in nuclear arms reduction talks underway with Russia. As part of the writing letter, uh, China appears not to be in compliance with the Article uh, 6 obligations under the NPT and this is something a lot of people try to kind of brush under the carpet because uh, nuclear war scares people and people just like to deny that things are okay. Like I've mentioned before, the, the normal bias that people have, it's really quite incredible. And, uh, you know, I had talks with some people and they're like, oh, China can't do anything. Oh, it's all lies. It's like, really? How do you know? What do you work for China? <laughs> are you, or are you like a disinformation uh, spreader? Like, how do you know? We're getting reports from government agencies and uh, the United States intelligence and uh, even Russian intelligence, other countries across the world, NATO, the United Nations. Like, it's undeniable. You know, it's, it's really insane. So the next major war may be very different, U.S. Defense, uh, Defense Secretary says. 
Now, this is an interesting topic because this is more or less speculation to how a war can unfold. Um, I think it's important to note that how many different fronts are now available um, in the world to where war can take place. Um, we have biological war. We have uh, hacking wars um, like electronic. We have food supply wars. Um, we have, you know, things that can be dropped from space. We have missiles that can travel across the air farther than they've ever and faster than they've ever done before. Um, the underwater capabilities are now increasing, which we're going to get into um, with the spending with the United States. Um, so at this point, it's really you can expect, you know, anything to happen. Um, you know, at, at, once one country counteracts someone's capabilities, um, it's, it's like uh, cyber warfare. As once you build a wall, there's a way to tunnel or climb or drill through that wall that you've created. Um, even if you want to, you know, uh, uh, equate it to a firewall. It's like with firewalls, there's still a ways around them if a hacker is good enough, um, which just makes hackers more capable. Um, so really, you're you're here to expect anything. Um, Air Force, and if it wasn't, then you, we wouldn't see this next article. U.S. Air Force plans to buy more bombs better suited for operations in the Pacific. <clears throat> All right, so the, the new Cold War with China currently being pushed in Washington does not serve the millions of people demanding change across this country, this country, nor the billions of people affected by U.S. foreign policy abroad. Soon after, Joe Biden called for a gargantuan seven hundred and fifty three billion military budget for fiscal year of 2022 the air force indicated that it plans to buy fewer small uh diameter bombs in favor of spending heavily state-of-the-art long-range weapons that are better suited for operations in the pacific the air force's proposal is constant as uh, consistent with this is a weird text it looks really weird consistent with other investments outlined in Biden's Pentagon budget request, including billions of dollars for U.S. nuclear weapon modernization. Nuclear weapon modernization. So Biden budget backs in billions for nuclear weapons. There's no dismantling going on here. <laughs> nuclear chance of nuclear war is just increasing by the day. Um, so keep that in mind. And why is that? Because China keeps pushing their nukes and their trades with Iran and with Iranium and plutonium is increasing. They're going to use Iran as like a buffer for themselves. And that's why they're sending out their, you know, their little boats to try to mess with the United States um, and anyone else and fishing vessels and stuff like that that come through. Um, so threat for nuclear war is actually increasing despite what a lot of people think. The Air Force also wants to increase its procurement of the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile Extension uh, Extended Range, uh, or the JSSMER, Stealth Cruise Missile, an advanced weapon with a range of roughly 600 miles. China has nuclear missiles that can go 900,000 miles. This is nothing in comparison. Officials have previously stated that the JASSM and its cousin, the long-range anti-ship missile, can be used to stand off precision strikes throughout the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, China's nuclear subs can avoid detection, and they could launch nukes at any one of these vessels or countries. So um, not only is China really advancing uh, Beyond us in technology, uh, they really have us in nuclear technology as well, and they're they're really uh, gathering up the resources thanks to the Belt and Road Initiative, which I stated in uh, video number one of the World War III series. So let's go on to the next one: future of China's semiconductor industry. Um, I really set these up in a good order, didn't I? Pat myself on the back for that one. <clears throat> over the past four years, the Trump administration, driven by growing concerns over China's rise in technical, uh, technological competitor as a technological competitor, competitor, and the coupling of its military and civilian industries, 
has ratcheted up controls on semiconductors and semiconductor manufacturing equipment dest uh, destined for Chinese end users. Yep, and that's why they're the ones that are behind a lot of these hacks. Yes, I know, because um, I watched hacker his um, news as well. Uh, a lot of these, they do have a lot of um, Russian schools that are designed specifically for hacking and also international schools of hacking um, that actually have uh, tests where they're like monthly hacking tests is to try to hack into actual facilities and places. Um, and although a lot of them call themselves ethical hackers, I mean, they're kind of doing some unethical things. So <clears throat> China Hawks and the administration viewed American companies' dominance of key semiconductor subsectors, particularly in areas as electronic design, automation, and other tools needed to produce advanced semiconductors. It's a key policy leveler, uh, lever. They sought to use this lever to push the Chinese companies for specific types of activities deemed problematic by U.S. officials and to push back Beijing's heavy subsidies to the semiconductor industry. Now, something I said way before the Biden administration started to try to get like TSMC and other manufacturing companies here in America, I stated it last year. I was talking about how if we really want to start beating China, we have to, first of all, Elon Musk has to get out of China. He's already given them enough technology. I love e Elon Musk and a lot of stuff he does, but uh, that was one of, if not the dumbest move that he ever did was moving to China and having Tesla manufactured there because all he's doing is giving them um, technology and they're taking advantage of it and pushing him out and talking crap about Tesla left and right and smearing them. Come on, Elon. Come on, Elon. We know you're better than that. Uh, and one thing that we should really do is, I mean, what's one of the major components in making semiconductors and chips is silicon. I mean, we have one of the largest deserts in the world. Let's start using the sand and other materials that we have here, um, at least for a, a semi-temporary basis, so we can pull out of this uh economic war and start manufacturing our own semiconductors it's like we have some of the materials here um so there china is taking hold and i covered this before many times taking hold of the semiconductor industry which is putting them ahead in the consumer industry because where are most things created anyway in china most things in america are created in china and that started in the 70s uh with nixon so and Walmart was was one of the first, if not the first companies to go international like that. Um, so this is just another concern here. What's after this, huh? How does war affect the economy? You know, war can be extremely good. And it's a flip of the coin here because it can go either way. War can have a positive or negative effect on the economy. If a country is in a depression, war can simulate, stimulate the economy. This happens with World War II. It was World War II that got us out of the Great Depression. Now, I've made that a point many times. When a country goes to war, many jobs are created. People are needed to work in the factories that are making supplies for war. Soldiers are needed to fight. And a lot of money is pumped into the economy. This may cause the economy to grow. But we've got to be very careful because what happens after that when war reaches the end? Then we see the shutdown of all these companies if they can't start uh, reallocating their services in other ways. And we saw that um, after World War I especially that was a huge economic uh, impact um, before the roaring 20s when when things started to pick up again um, <clears throat> which took about seven seven years or more uh, to even reach that that roaring 20s height um, and then we just fell back back into another depression right after that anyway and then world war ii ensued um, and then world war ii got us out of the depression but you saw a lot of jobs being um, shut down because a lot of those those jobs didn't need, weren't necessary anymore especially in the production of a lot of you know um uh, uh war um type you know bomb making and gun manufacturing and powders and stuff like that and that's why you saw um a huge return of women back to the to the the homework um arena because when the the men were out fighting the women were the ones you know making a lot of the the goods for the men to fight with uh, which was a, a beautiful thing and um what happened after that well we saw all the men come back from war they needed jobs and uh the women 
after the uh, the huge boom in births, women by you know i mean it kind of worked out to some degree uh, started staying home and uh, taking care of the kids and families and having more kids while the men took over a lot of those jobs that they didn't have while they were overseas um and there was a switch but then there was that you know whole paradigm where now half of the income was cut so you got to be careful for that and let's see however war can be harmful to the economy if war goes on for many years it may become a drain on the economy financially Wars are very expensive to fight. The longer war is being fought means more money is going to the war effort instead of developing other aspects of the economy. Too much spending on war can lead a country into significant debt. As we see Joe Biden pass a nearly $8 billion budget for war. And that's just the beginning. Thus, war can have a mixed effect on the economy depending on circumstances. It could stimulate or sink it. It usually stimulates it first and goes on for too long, it, it starts to sink. So what's this? <clears throat> right after the budget is introduced, we go right on to the U.S. Army test missile in the Pacific threat uh, with missile... with. Let's read that again, huh? U.S. Army tests new missile with Pacific threat in mind. And these are the missiles we were just talking about, I, I, I suppose. The precision strike missile will give the U.S. Army a long-range anti-ship weapon. The U.S. Army's new long-range attack missile recently completed its longest test launch yet, flying around 400 kilometers. Uh, That's okay. That's kind of impressive. Uh, The precision strike missile will replace another aging truck-mounted missile. Since the United States has left the Cold War era uh, intermediate nuclear forces treaty in 2019, it is no longer prohibited from deploying ground-launching missile with ranges greater than 500 kilometers, and the Army's new strike missile is expected to be tested beyond that range later this summer. All right, all right, okay. So they're kind of making up for some of the uh, uh, the lack that I was talking about a few minutes ago, and um, we're starting to give China a run for their money here. To that end, early versions of the precision strike missile will be able to target ships when it's deployed in 2023. <clears throat> to support the U.S. Navy, I mean, it takes time, it takes money, and it takes time to, to do things. Sometimes it's really interesting, I think, when you see the amount of time that things need to be done in warfare. Especially back in the day, in like the 14 to the 1800s, where, you know, it took messages long to go back and forth on, you know, people running or, or horseback, or even flyer pigeons, you know. To that end, early versions of the Precise Strike Missile will be able to target ships when it's deployed in 2023 to support the U.S. Navy in establishing control over the seas by threatening adversary warships is something of a reversal of the roles for the Army, which traditionally has been supported by the Navy against targets ashore. So we're seeing a lot of uh, um, technology uh, ramping up in the military and we're seeing a lot of spending starting to take place. Why do you think that happens? Let's see what happens before wars take place. So keep that in mind. Like I said, I'm going to leave all these in the description box below. China hacked a Navy contractor and secured a trove of highly sensitive data on submarine warfare. Whoops! There goes that. See what I mean? This This is what I'm talking about where, you know, Warfare is an ever-evolving thing to where it's just like, you know, hacking or or anything else where once you start building walls, the people find ways around it to counter it. So, like, never feel too secure in what's going on. Uh, Chinese government hackers have compromised the computers of a Navy contractor, stealing massive amounts of highly sensitive data related to undersea warfare, including secret plans to develop a supersonic anti-ship missile for use on U.S. submarines by 2020. The breaches occurred in January and February, the official said, speaking on the condition of anonymity to discuss an ongoing investigation. The hackers targeted a contractor who works for the Naval Undersea Warfare Center, a military organization headquartered in Newport, Rhode Island, that conducts research and development for submarines and underwater weaponry. So this goes even further into 
So 614 gigabytes of material were material related. So that's you know over half a terabyte um, related to closely held. And if that's in documents, that's a lot of information. Um, closely held project known as Sea Dragon, as well as signals and sensor data, submarine radio room information relating to cryptographic systems, and the Navy Submarine Development Unit's Electronic Warfare Library. That's not good. The Washington Post agreed to withhold certain details about the compromised missile product and request of the Navy, which argued that their release could harm national security. And this goes in tandem with the new nuclear submarines that China has been pumping out that can evade our radar systems and sonar systems. Um, so there's a lot to take into consideration here. <clears throat> so let's go on to the next one. So, you know, I mean, this is just to prove everything and to prove where this is all going and to show how everything is escalating, uh, escalating to a new large-scale global possibly nuclear war. Um, people get too comfortable with, with what's going on around them. And, you know, I was talking about this months ago. Last year, I was bringing this stuff up to my friends and they get like scared sometimes. And they were like, no, you're such an idiot. You know, my dad's been talking about uh, China going to war with China since 1995. It's like, no, no, China was not a threat in 1995. And now they're growing into an incredible threat. This is a recent thing. And right when I said it, um, after the election, I was like, there's going to be a world war within three years. Within three years of Biden's election, there was going to be a world war with China. And I was getting the laughs. I was getting the laughs. It's been less than a year already. And look at this stuff. It's like, come on. Come on. I know I know you don't want it to be true. And denial is, is tough. But like, come on. I'm backing myself up here. Uh, U.S. Department of Defense dot gov. So this is a government website. All right. <sighs> DOD budget request boosts research, nuclear modernization, and includes 2.7 percent pay raise. Fiscal year 2022 Defense Department budget requests include the largest ever research, development, test, and evaluation requests, 112 billion which is a 5.1 increase over fiscal 2021. It also includes $27.7 billion for nuclear triad modernization. The budget totals, is the eight, that's the, budget, the Biden budget right there. The budget totals $752.9 billion. It includes $37.9 billion for the Department of Energy and other agencies. It reflects a 1.6 increase from the fiscal 2021 enact budget. Budget provides 2.7% pay raise for both military and civilians while investing, I like that one, while investing nearly $9 billion in family support programs. Our, our troops need backup and they need to be well fed. In a statement today, Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin III said the budget invests in people supports readiness and modernization, combats threats posed by climate change, and provides capabilities needed to meet the pacing threat from Beijing. I don't see what climate change really has to do with the military. Uh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, the climate has been changing since the Ice Age. You know, it's actually the climate has changed ever since the creation of the world, you know, four and a half billion years ago. It's never been steady or constant. There's been multiple ice ages, multiple floods, multiple droughts, <clears throat> oxygen, carbon dioxide changes. Look up science. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen H. Hicks briefed the media today on the fiscal 2022 Defense Department budget. She reiterated Austin's comments and said the budget also addresses the COVID-19 pandemic and drawing of the U.S. forces from Afghanistan with an exit date of September I thought it was already supposed to happen. Oh, yeah, September 11th. That's right. September 11th. That's weird. That's a weird day. It's like they want something to happen. Adding that the department will provide over-the-horizon capability for counterterrorism and Afghan national security force support. Now, I'm leaving all this here. I think I pretty much made my point. 
um, as to what's going on. And uh, I think it's really important that people understand the severity of, of what's actually happening here. Um, one of these pages has really great um, indexes here, right here. So if you really want to research what's going on economically uh, and, and, and with the uh, supplies of semiconductors and electronics and materials, rare earth materials, where they find all this research, um, go to this American Affairs and then scroll down and you're going to see uh, a huge index of where they get all this information from. Um, so you can spend hours and hours going through that um, to your heart's content. Um, but I wanted to just make, make this all a point and to prove what's going on and to show you where this is escalating to, uh, how the economy is, uh, how the economy is, is really getting affected, um, how this is a global issue, how things are getting worse, not better. Um, and, uh, the next part might be how to, um, prepare and, uh, what to get, um, for these events and and how to kind of mitigate a lot of the problems and counteract and what we can do to kind of save the economy so that's going to be in part four uh so stay tuned to that um and uh with that i kind of want to say you know thank you i love you all um all of you people who watch comment subscribe and even the people who don't you know i love everybody in this world and i really want the best for them um and even the evil people in this world because if if things start changing in their minds and things start changing in their behavior, then, you know, this entire world can really be turned around. And I'm not going to, you know, um, wish hate upon everybody because I really want positive stuff to happen. And I really want the best for everybody. And, uh, you know, when I pray at night and stuff, I pray for everybody in the world, not just, you know, people who I want or people I like, even, you know, my enemies, the people who don't like me, the people who want to hurt me and people who even might want me dead. You know, I pray for them because, you know, if we can really turn this around and change people by even backing ourselves up with fact and proving that, you know, where your stance is and um, your beliefs and uh, try to be not so biased in your opinions and try to be very logical. Um, it should be logic followed by emotion um, because that's how we can really uh, mitigate and deter a lot of the negative things in this world. You know, a lot of the negative things are also um, mostly all perpetrated by emotion and raw emotion and uncurbed emotion. And um, that can be a really big problem. Um, you know, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions and everybody thinks they're on the good side. Everyone thinks that they're the righteous ones. Um, even the, you know, crazy people, they think that, you know, besides a few exceptions who have, you know, obvious mental problems, um, people believe that they're on the side of good and they want to triumph. Um, so just take all this into consideration and see where our economy is heading and see how it's all kind of collapsing and do whatever you can to prepare. And preparing is probably going to be the next video. I think that would make sense. Um, and, to, and, and what we should expect to happen. So thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this or at least got some information and insight as to what's happening. And like I said, the, you shouldn't be afraid of, of, of facts and what's going on because the more you engage in this stuff, the more you can prepare and the more you can um, protect yourself. If you're oblivious to what's going on, then you're not going to be able to protect yourself. And, and you know, it's like you don't want to be the last person on the boat who waits um, to get a life vest and then there's all of a sudden no more left. And then what are your options at that point? You know, um, so have an awesome day, night or morning or whatever it is, wherever you are. And uh, remember that I love you all. And thanks again. And um, take care. I'll see you in the next video.